After you set up a new Kubernetes cluster and deploy your first application and service, there are a couple more things you need to do to make sure your application is accessible from outside the cluster. In this video, I will show you how you can deploy a load balancer to provision routable external IP addresses for your applications, as well as an ingress controller to enable you to access your applications using domain names. Let us take a brief look at pod networking in a Kubernetes cluster and see how the components we are about to install fall into the picture. When you deploy a web app, for example, in a Kubernetes cluster, the pod or pod replicas in the deployment are provisioned a pod IP by the CNI plugin. This pod is local to the pod and is only accessible from within the pod's network namespace. In order for other pods in the cluster to access this pod, you have to create a Kubernetes network abstraction called a service. Service will be of type cluster IP and will be assigned a cluster IP address that is reachable from anywhere within the cluster. Traffic sent to this cluster IP is forwarded to the pod IP or load balanced across all healthy pod IPs if you have more than one replica in your deployment using destination NAT rules. Using services enables cluster-wide connectivity between pods, but you will not be able to access this cluster IP from outside the cluster using a web browser, for example. Now, there are two main ways you can facilitate external access to a pod, and that is one, by using a service type of node port, and two, a service type of load balancer. When you create a service with type node port, a unique static port is allocated in the root network namespace of each node, and this port is mapped via port translation to the port exposed by the backend pod. You likely already have direct network connectivity to your node network, so all you have to do in order to access your application is to connect to the IP address of any node in the cluster using this static port, and you will be directed through to the pod. However, you likely do not wish to use your node IPs as endpoints to your applications. If you're running hundreds or thousands of services, you can't keep track of all the ports you open on your nodes. Not to mention that this opens up a huge security hole in your cluster. So a much better way of doing this is to have a separate IP address for every service you wish to expose to your external network. You can do this by creating a service of type load balancer. Each load balancer service instance is assigned a unique externally routable IP address. Load balancer IP addresses are normally a subset of the node's physical network address range. This makes these IPs reachable from within your local network. So you can simply use the external IP address to directly access your application. But there's one caveat to using this service type, and that is you need to have a load balancer installed in your cluster which will be responsible for assigning external IP addresses. A common load balancer used in bare metal Kubernetes clusters is the Metal LB load balancer. Once installed in your cluster, you create an IP address pool, which is a range of IP addresses to be allocated as external IPs to all services of type load balancer. The second Metal LB component is a speaker daemon set, which runs on each node in the cluster. Each speaker agent uses something called gratuitous app to configure the node's network interface to respond to app requests for the assigned IP addresses. For example, if you have five pods running on a particular node and you have set up a service type of load balancer for each of these pods, each service will be assigned an external IP address from the IP address pool. The Metal LB speaker will then advertise using gratuitous app to any machines on the network that each of these five IP addresses is mapped to the MAC address of the node's network interface. So any machine sending traffic to any of these external IPs will send it to the node's network interface and it will be forwarded to the appropriate services within the Kubernetes cluster using NAT. Let us see how this works in practice by deploying the Metal LB load balancer to a Kubernetes cluster. Now, if you go over to the Metal LB installation documentation, it lists several ways in which you can install Metal LB in your cluster. You can use Helm or Customize. There's also a Metal LB operator, or you can choose to use Manifest. I'm going to use Manifest to install, but you can as well choose any method that is quicker for you. As a prerequisite, the documentation says you need to edit the kube proxy config map in the kube system namespace in order to enable strict app. Then all we have to do at this point to install Metal LB is execute the kubectl apply command, 
with the URL path to the manifest. This will go ahead and create the Metal LB system namespace, custom resource definitions, service accounts, roles, cluster roles, and bindings, secrets, and finally, the Metal LB controller deployment and speaker demo set. You can run a kubectl get pods in the Metal LB system namespace to verify that everything installed correctly. You can also run a kubectl API resources and grep Metal LB to display all the custom resources installed along with Metal LB. To complete the configuration, you need to create an IP address pool and an L2 advertisement. So you can define an object of kind IP address pool and specify your range of external IPs. You can create this new IP address pool using the kubectl apply command in the Metal LB system namespace. You can also verify that the pool has been created with the kubectl get IP address pool command. Similarly, we define another object of kind L2 advertisement and specify the IP address pool advertise. We can create the L2 advertisement with kubectl apply and verify with kubectl get L2 advertisement. Now that we have a load balancer installed in the cluster, we can test it out by creating a test deployment with a service of type load balancer. I have an example deployment manifest here defining a web app deployment and a web app service of type load balancer. If I apply that with kubectl apply and do a kubectl get services, I can see that my service has been created successfully. I also see the service type of load balancer and the external IP address assigned by Metal LB. I can also verify that I can reach the web app with a call command and as you can see, everything works properly. So at this point, you can create multiple services in your cluster and assign each service with a routable external IP, which you can use to access your applications. But an even better way to access your applications is by using domain names. I am sure you would rather avoid the hassle of having to memorize several IP addresses and would prefer using friendly domain names to access your application. You also want to reduce the risk of running out of IP addresses, especially if you have limits in the number of IP addresses you can allocate in your network. To achieve this kind of setup, you will need to install an ingress controller in your cluster. An ingress controller is essentially a reverse proxy, which is a server that sits between client devices and web servers. It acts as an intermediary for requests from clients to those servers. It provides many benefits, including load balancing, caching, SSL termination, and much more. The ingress controller will have a service type of load balancer to which Metal LB will assign an external IP address. You can then point all your domain names and subdomain names to this IP address and the ingress controller will intelligently route incoming traffic to the appropriate services within your cluster. Just like load balancers, there are several ingress controllers like Traffic or Nginx ingress controller that you can install in your cluster. Let us see how to deploy the Nginx ingress controller to a Kubernetes cluster. And again, just like Metal LB, there are a number of methods described in the documentation that you can use to deploy Nginx ingress controller. This time I'll use the Helm package manager to deploy the controller. First, we need to pull the Nginx ingress Helm chart with a Helm pull command. After, we need to change into the chart directory, which should be named Nginx ingress. Once in there, we need to issue the kubectl apply f and then the crds directory to deploy all the custom resource definitions used by the controller. We can then run the helm install command to deploy the nginx ingress controller to the cluster. Once the installation is complete, so we can verify this by running a kubectl get pods in the nginx ingress namespace. We can also issue a kubectl get services, and we can see that the nginx ingress controller service of type load balancer has been created. We can also see the external IP address, which has been assigned to it by Metal LB. We can now reconfigure our web app to take advantage of the new ingress controller. To do this, first we change our web app service type back to cluster IP. Simply removing the type load balancer line will revert the service back to the default type of cluster IP. We can apply the deployment manifest for this change to take effect. Next, we define a new ingress object. We set the ingress class to nginx, which will enable the nginx ingress controller to pick up and configure this new ingress. 
We also set the domain name under host and set the backend service and port number to match the web app service. We can apply the ingress manifest to create the new ingress. A kubectl get ingress shows the newly created ingress object. We can now map the domain name of the web app to the external IP address of the Nginx ingress controller in our local hosts file. You can achieve the same effect by creating an A record in your DNS server as well. Once this is done, you can test using curl or a web browser that you can access the web app via a domain name. And as you can see, the web app is now externally accessible via its domain name. So hopefully now you have all the tools you need to set up a load balancer and ingress controller in your cluster, as well as create access to your cluster applications using external IPs and domain names. Once again, thanks a lot for watching. And if you found any value in this video, leave a like and please consider subscribing for more Kubernetes tutorials. I will see you in the next one.